Hi everyone, this is going to be a screencast on how you can use the app Padlet as a back channel in your class. Search for Padlet and sign up. I'm just going to sign in with my Google account and it's going to ask me to accept um, that they can view my email address and my basic profile and that's fine and I'm going to tell them that I am a teacher. And that's it. This is my dashboard. And the first thing I want to do is create a new Padlet. So go up to New Padlet. And here is the wall that you'll be creating on. And all you need to do is double click on a space and you can write something. But we're not going to do that just yet. If I go into my Properties wheel right here, the first option is to give my Padlet a title. So we'll call it Test Padlet and the description, which is optional, could be this is where I will run a back channel for my class. If I click on one of these icons right here, I could put a little portrait beside my title or I could leave it blank. I could also add one from a URL image or upload from my desktop. The next thing you'll want to do is go into the wallpaper icon. You can change it to many different wallpapers. You can even use a good old fashioned chalkboard. And once again, you can also add your own from a URL link or upload something from your hard drive. Then you can choose the layout that you'd like. Free form means the posts will appear all over the page. A stream makes it look like it's a blog, so one will come up um, on top of the other with the most recent post being on the top. And a grid will have them appear in all four corners of your space. For now, we'll just keep it at free form, and you can always change this at any point. Next, you want to look at the privacy. The default is to make your link public but have the link hidden so you can't search it on Google and it's not in the public areas of Padlet. And the default is can write. If you just want this to be a viewable Padlet or perhaps when you're finished with this back channel and you still want the students to be able to look at it but not change it at all, you might just switch it to can view and then click submit. Other options are to keep it entirely private so only people you add by email can access the wall. You could make it password protected. Totally public so it's completely searchable on the web. And you can also add people by their emails or their usernames. You can have uh, the option to moderate the posts as well. So it just depends on what you're looking for. For this purpose I'm going to leave it as the default. Hidden link and can write and I just clicked submit. Notifications are also possible. You can be notified once a day by an email if anybody has added anything to the Padlet wall. And addresses is really helpful. You can actually personalize this Padlet URL so that it's easier for your students to type in. I would change this one to Demo Padlet. And it says right here that that address is available. I'll say Pick. And then you can see right away it changes the URL to um, demo Padlet at the end so that if I'm writing it on the board or I need to communicate this URL to my students it's a lot easier to remember. You can copy an entire Padlet or you can copy it without a post and just take the settings that you've set up that's possible and you can delete the Padlet uh, with a few options right here. And That's it for the settings. If I click on my wall I'm now going to start to actually generate some back channel comments. It just requires a double click you can give it a nice heading in red and an explanation or further detail right in the box. I can hyperlink to a picture or an image so I'll find something right now um, if I go to images and I will just copy the image URL, I'll paste it right here, I click add and there it is. So here is my first post. I can resize it as the administrator. My students however if they were logged into this would not be able to resize it. And what I'll do is show you what it would look like for someone who's not an editor. So I will copy the URL and paste it in a different Chrome browser. Now I'm acting as a student. I can come in, but I'm not able to move this post around. But as a student, I can add something, add detail, and 
I can add a picture of a cat. <laughs> Because it's my post, I can move it around as the student. I can resize it as the student, but I'm still not able to move anybody else's. As the teacher, if I scroll back, I can also have the ability to move my students' posts around. Um, now, just to show you what this would be like if I do one more post. This is, as I said, the freeform style. If I go back into my settings and I go into layout, this is freeform, so they're spread out everywhere. I can change this right away to stream, and what you'll see is the most recent post at the top and the oldest post at the bottom. And I can no longer change the size of my post. It just stays this size. And it also automatically changes on the student's view as well. I can change this layout again to grid to show you what it looks like. It just pops up in a row. I'd love to show you a finished Padlet that I recently used in my own classroom. We were doing some reading on the Canadian Pacific Railway and I opened up a Padlet just as I did in the demo for my students and as they were reading I wanted them to share any interesting information they found any images or video clips that they thought would support their understanding and they published it to this Padlet. It was open to them as writers. They could not change anything that didn't belong to them just like I modeled right over here on the student version. And this is what they came up with. I have a title, I have a little bit of extra detail right here and as they were working they posted their thoughts and they shared and now we have a record as a back channel of all of their thinking that they did while they were reading. And I think this is wonderful to have as evidence of their learning and it's also something they can refer back to. Now that they're finished this Padlet, what I'm going to do as the owner is change it to view only. I don't want them to change it right now. Uh, I may reopen it again at a later point, but I would shift it to view only so that they can't modify it again until I want them to. Another way that I've seen Padlet used is as a classroom newsletter. It's a different way to engage parents in what's going on in your classroom. If I show you an example, this is one that I've created as a demo for my school just to showcase what is going on at my school and to share this information with our parent community. It's instead of a typical newsletter that can go home, it's an interactive newsletter. They can come to this Padlet wall, it's set as view only, and they have the option of clicking on links to learn about what's going on in our school. There's some informational videos for the parents to understand why we're doing this, what is a digital footprint, and then some sharing, you know, a little bit of a brag list, what's going on in our classrooms. Um, showing what the primary, junior, and intermediate classrooms are doing with some examples of student work. We have received parent permission for any pictures of students that have been posted publicly online. The other thing that could be done is use Padlet as a platform to show students understanding of a concept. Why not create this as a virtual poster board? So that's Padlet. I hope uh, it's something you're willing to try and please feel free to uh, post any questions or comments and hopefully this back channel works for you.